Hey, it's Jessica here with 757 Bandwire, uh, with Livewire, and I am here with Out of the Furnace. Yes. Hey. Hello. <laughs> awesome. You guys go down through and introduce yourselves and tell me what you do in the band. Right. Well, my name's Andy, and I'm the drummer. Uh, I'm John. I play guitar and sing. My name is Steve Steve, and I love on my bass. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So uh, the first big question I have is, where did the name for Out of the Furnace come from? Well, we were... Uh, we were brainstorming for names. I actually find naming a band just about the hardest thing about it. They even have generators for it online if you look really oh, hard. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We found I mean, a couple. Yeah, and it was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> it's entertaining. Though. Yeah. It is entertaining. Yeah. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were, we were sitting around one night after practice just brainstorming, realizing we needed to come up with a good name. And I think Andy first suggested the, the name Out of the Furnace. And uh, mainly just, there was a, a movie out. Um, it sounded kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, no, it sounded great. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I heard it, I was like, that's, I think that's the name. That's great. And then we, we switched up the, the spelling of the first two words, essentially. We did the O-U-T-T-A. Right. Kind of harken back to our blues roots and a bit of slang. So, so yeah, it's, it's up. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, how, how did you guys all meet to form Out of the Furnace? That's a good question. Um, John and I have been friends for a while. Uh, we we all met through church, but John and I have been friends since June of '97, and Andy and I have been friends for about three years. And then shortly after that, John and Andy uh, got to know each other. But That's I believe cool. they got closer being in the band. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, we we're all at church. We all met basically yeah. one way or another. That's cool. Yeah, that's it, awesome. Yeah, the way it, the way it formed is, um, you know, I was looking to to jam with people because I first started playing bass to kind of fill up time because I was kind of depressed and I needed something. I needed a hobby per se, so I started playing. I was like, I want to jam, and a lot of my friends are like, Oh, I don't have time because they're in other bands. So I hounded Andy to get his drums. <laughs> to this day, I still don't know why he was not annoyed. I don't know why. <laughs> he wasn't like, look, could you just leave me alone and go away? Yeah, yeah particularly because my drums were in Rhode Island in my dad's <laughs> garage. So yeah. I couldn't just go, you know, get him out of my... Yeah, but I still, I still don't know why he wasn't going. Because, like, every time I saw him, I was going to bring it up. We <laughs> were persistent. It wasn't yeah. it was an annoying persistence. Really. Okay. Yeah, but it seems like it was a good play. persistence. Yeah, honestly, yeah. I love yeah. playing. So, I mean, it was, I, good. it was good motivation for me. For yeah, sure. and then after that, it was it was a weird journey for Andy and I. When we was, he got his drums, and it was like, we had other people play with us, and we're like, how do we get this guy from, like, Alpha Music to come play with us? And and I, back in my mind, I was always like, we got to get John to play. And I was like, I don't know how he's going to want to <laughs> sit around and play with us. We're like junkie, compared to his brother to a talented. Yeah. Like... Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Then you gotta you gotta ask John how how he did decide to kiss because we're like I I closed my eyes and just was like God somebody anything <laughs> so, so yeah. Well, I mean, it's as far as me coming up with these guys, it really was just Steve wanting to jam and um, he'd come over with his bass and we jam once or twice um, at my place just to. You know, he was really just trying to learn and, and get better at the bass, and I played, I played for a while, so got to play with a lot of people. And um, as he said, I mean, I'm I'm low low man on the totem pole when it comes to my family musically. Um, my my older brother's a professional bass player. My young brother's a professional wow. drummer. Um, my dad's a phenomenal guitar player. I mean, I'm just I'm I'm way down there, but. But I mean, I, I love playing, and I I kind of I had actually just bought an amp um, for the first time in several years, and I was like, I, you know, I'd actually like to play this and turn the thing up. So um, Steve had started playing with Andy and another guy, um, more specifically, a guy named Andy Scott initially, and then that kind of dissipated. And Steve was like, just come over and jam, just come over and jam with us, just come over and jam with us. He's like, I just I want to get better, just come over and jam. I was like, hey, why not, you know? Uh, so I brought my amp over to Annie's place, um, and we plugged in, and we just started messing around. I think it was the very first time we played together. Steve just, he played something on the bass. He was just like messing around. He just played something on the bass, and I heard, I was like, oh, 
I like that. Let's play it kind of like this. And then we started playing it, and then we didn't even have a microphone at that point. We were just yeah. jamming musically, but I just started, there's like a tune just got in my head, and I started singing it. And that ended up being the song Do You, which is on our EP. Very cool. Which yeah, is coming up on yeah, our that Very cool. Also. Very cool. So yeah, I mean, that's uh, that was the very first song we wrote, and we just... Yeah. And we, you know, we just kept jamming and playing and uh, kept writing other things, and uh, you know, then we went from there. That's awesome. So, looking back at your past musically, who who got you started? Each individually, what are each of your stories? I mean, obviously, I can tell John that yours is family related for sure, mm -hmm. definitely. I'm sure your dad and the family must have been a, a big influence. But how about you know, what what what's the story for each of you? Yeah. Well, Andy, why don't you um, tell your story? Yeah, well, uh, I've played the drums, I mean, on and off for close to 15 years, but really never in a band, never anything structured, never took any lessons. Um, actually, my friend um, at high school, I think seventh grade or eighth grade, we he played guitar. We used to go to the band room in high school, and I used to just jump on the drums, didn't know what I was doing. He kind of taught me a basic basics, and then... Uh, uh, um, crazily enough, his um, his older brother wound up killing himself, and he oh. had a drum set. Yeah, a very tragic story. Um, but um, his brother, um, he had a drum set, so I wound up kind of taking that over, um, and we just kept playing through, um, and that's kind of how I just got the, the passion for drums. And then again, on and off for years, it'd either be in my you know friend's shed or my dad's garage, but I always. I always just love playing. So. So was out of the furnace your first band? Oh yeah, yeah. I've jammed around a little bit with just some friends, but I mean, it never got out of out of the living room really. So, yeah. Out of the furnace. John. Yeah. Well, I um, my dad taught himself guitar when he was young, like a teenager, and played for years and years through college, and then through the time when he was in the navy, and then the early '80s pretty much put the guitar down for a while, mm -hmm. um, and then. My brothers and I were born and grew up, and then in '94, my dad picked the guitar back up. And when he when he started playing again, um, both my brothers and I just really kind of caught the music bug, and so That's I started cool. learning guitar. And then my older brother is, like I said, a phenomenal bass player and can also play guitar. My younger brother is a drummer and can play everything. Um, so uh, yeah, it was just it was a kind of a family mm -hmm. circumstance. I just pick up stuff from my dad and pick up stuff from friends and then just try and learn what I could. And so is this your first band as well? No, no, I no? had a, I mean, pretty quick. I, when I was 15, I had a band, um, gosh, that was almost 20 years ago, which is crazy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I had a band in high school, like a little garage band with uh, three friends and then uh, the drummer and the bass player left and then my older brother came and then another friend of ours played drums and we played. We, we probably stopped playing around 97, late 97, early 98, something like that. And I haven't had a band since. Wow. So, so you've had a long break. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Stevie Steve? Um, well, I'll, bass has always been my favorite instrument out of any instrument. It's, it's Is it perfect. the boom? I mean, it's sexy, it's perfect. It's, it's got that deep sound? Yeah, it, it moves people. It's like, like Barry people, White, right? Yeah, I'm not a huge Barry White fan, but it's more like I am like the '70s, you know. I, I like the Shop Con Rufus, oh, yeah, yeah, Brian yeah. Graham, yeah. you know, Graham Central Station, Slide the Family Stones. You know, I could go on Ohio Players. <laughs> I mean, I could go on for days. Like the OJ's. for me, yeah, the OJ's are good. Yeah, I, I like. I always liked that '70s funk. So it's like, you know, when I was when I was 16, I actually had a set of turntables that I sold for a jazz bass. Wow. Cool. Because one of my friends taught me in, in the joining the band. And um so so I joined this band and I s I didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't take any lessons. I took like I took like a ten minute lesson from his brother or something. <laughs> and he's like, you know, I'm just gonna show you what to do and he just showed me what to do. And that band lasted like three shows and then that was in a, in a recording and that was it. <laughs> and, and I don't even think I really rec I even really played on that recording. So it was like, mm -hmm. it was like nothing. It was, yeah. it was Dave in that band? Yeah, Dave was. His younger brother was in that band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was called Last Ditch Effort. 
We had, they actually played one of our songs on 96X back in the day with Micah Bob. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So so it's like, yeah, that was that was like a few months at the most. And then I, you know, I went through a lot of financial struggles over the years. So I sold my bass and had nothing. And then, like, the reason I picked up the bass again was mm -hmm. my friend, you know, he left that at my house. And I was like, okay, um, I'm kind of struggling here with depression. Like, how do I... Got to find something to fill that yeah, spot. Yeah, and, and that's what it did. And then I started cool. taking lessons. I was like, this is nice. And I was like, this time, I'm going to really take it serious and I'm going I'm to follow through with it. And I did, and and I just and when I get when I make up my mind on something, it, it's everything I do is really intense, and that was just I was just gonna follow through with that. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, this is an odd question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. What's your guilty pleasure music for each of you? Everybody's got that oh, one uh, band or something that they listen to, and you know, it's just well, like. Probably got a handful of them, but. I know. I used it to is. like uh, Ace of Bass. I guess that's gotta be. <laughs> wow. I, mean, I had that album. Yeah. I mean, but that was back in. That's like cool. the early 90s. 13, yeah. Yeah. Um, I gotcha. What, what about now? These Maybe, days, yeah. It could even be something from now, too, and then, you know? Well, that would be, yeah. Let's see. Gosh, it's tough. Do you know the answer to that question? No. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, anything 70s, that was 70s R&B or funk in 80s. 80s, anything 80s, I listen to all day. Yeah. I don't care if it's hair metal or whatever. I listen to anything. If it's Billy Ocean, but it's <laughs> like 70s funk is guilty pleasure. I Earth, got Wind you. And Fire. Yeah, yeah. And, you know. Oh, yeah. Like I said before, Larry Graham, Graham Central Station, Sly and the Family Stones. Right, right. Like anything, because 70s music is always happy. You never hear like funk music that's sad. You don't hear George Clinton like sad like ballad going on. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Come on, John. There's gotta be something. No, I, you know, I don't you would want to tell us this. We we feels like a guilty pleasure now. <laughs> I have to I have to agree. Out, I mean I love their first two albums, but now it's kind of I almost don't want to shame. I'm always like, yeah, like Weezer are the first two albums. You know, <laughs> yeah. get to qualify it. Um, I'm hoping their I'm hoping their upcoming album is a return to form, but who knows? Is it, um, is some country or something? Is there some country song yeah. hidden in there? Yeah, Lennox was good too. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great. yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. I I, just, I think of more. It's not so much a guilty pleasure per se, but I I listen to some things just out of pure nostalgia. Like re just recently, I've been going back and listening to a fair amount of Smashing Pumpkins, and they mm. were huge for me in high school. They were, you know, Same one of my favorite Same bands. Dream. I mean, it's not oh, like yeah. a guilty pleasure because it's not bad. I mean, it's incredibly well done rock and roll for the most part. But I mean, it's uh, I'm just yeah. I had another one. Was it OMC? That's on How Bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that counts. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. That was a pleasure. yeah. There you go. Definitely yeah. not for musical value. <laughs> so, musically, are there any other instruments that each of you can play that we might not be aware of? John on the drums a couple times. Yeah, no, yeah, I can, I can, I can play a beat or two. I'm not, I'm definitely not a drummer. <laughs> I, mean, I can, I can, I can get by on the bass. I'm not a great bass player. I tend to play the bass more like a guitar, which is a, a failing. But I, you know, that's how yeah. most people around here play bass. This, the guitar players transfer to bass players. Right. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. yeah Sometimes yeah. that's exactly exactly what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I hope right. to pick up harmonica here sooner than later. But we'll see. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. To add that in there too, that'd yeah. be awesome. Um, what about your local favorite local venue to play at? You know, everybody has a spot that, and it can be you can answer it as a group or even individually because everybody's got that one place that they just you know. That's that's our place. That's where we like Where's to go. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think I really like the Jewish mother at the hilltop. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, was on, yeah. I think we all can agree. Yeah. That was that was a, a group on that one. Yeah. But if we had to pick now, I would say for me it'd be Young Veterans. That's really. good. Young Veterans is, is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, ah, that's that's such a tough question. We we just just recently played the Belmont, and I've always loved that. Always love that venue. 
um, the tap house in North. Yeah, I like always, the tap house. I like the tap house. It's a good That's, time, man. It it's is, just such yeah. a such a great uh, such a great venue. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's I mean, there are a lot of great venues around here that we enjoy playing, but um, there there definitely are. In country to belief, I, I actually do like playing the North. Really? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we we have yeah. yeah, played a few times. We we played once with a local showcase, and that went pretty well. And then we ended up. I need space. Yeah, <laughs> that's a big. Yeah, yeah, yeah there is a big, stage, a big stage there. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, then we ended up opening up for a, a, a touring band around, and that was that was an even better time. Actually, that was a, that was a good mm -hmm. that was a good show. So I mean, when they're when the Nova staff, man, they know what they're doing, and when they're focused on it and focused on getting the sound right, it's oh like, yeah, it's it can be it can be killer there. It's absolutely. Phenomenal. So locally, are there any bands that you would like to maybe collaborate with, or see if you could hook up to do a song or something? Well, we I gotta, we gotta say our favorite local band is not local anymore. I yeah. I, mean, I, will, yeah. I don't want to speak yeah. for everybody, but we the vacations oh, yeah. yeah. were yeah. yeah. we miss them. They were awesome. We severely miss. I was just text. We've been texting with them all weekend. Yeah, you know yeah, just just. You know, we miss those guys a lot. We love playing shows with them. They just freaking rock like nobody's business. And, uh, yeah. Shakespeare's Ghost, I, I wouldn't mind if we collaborated with him. Yeah, he's a cool dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's good. There are a lot of, there, we, we have a lot of respect. We play with a lot of great bands. We play with a good variety of bands. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. It's been really cool. Yeah. Well, we made a lot of great friends, and they're just, I mean, Invisible Landscapes. And they're great Nester. guys. And Nestor, great guys. You know, um, Bad Lost Rebellion. I mean, yeah, Lost Rebellion. You know, Bad Volcano. Nonviolent Crimes. Good oh, oh yeah. yeah. Nonviolent Crimes will go way back. That, I mean, that's so, almost like La Familia right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah Nonviolent yeah. Crimes and the Dictations would probably be like, top, like, we consider them family, so. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That is so cool. Um, where do you guys hope to be in a year, musically? <laughs> uh, um, that's, cool. that's a dope, that's a lot, lot of answers to that. Because if you mean individually. Well, as a, as a band, as a, as a group, as a collectively band. as a band, yeah. Where do, where do you guys want to be? You know, what do you, what do you yeah, hope a, for? Festival or, or out just across um, seas? I'm, I'm hoping a year from now we're actually touring Europe. That... For me personally, that's cool. For, for for me personally, as a band, I would hope this for us to kind of get well known out there uh, overseas, and then be able to come back here and relax. And I'm hoping that we we will just start really busting through Europe by that time. That's awesome. Like really busting through. Can't complain about that. Yeah, no, that'd be that'd yeah. be great. I mean, obviously, next year we'll. We'll have a full-length album out, and right. I, the the goal is to um, to really get that into as many hands as possible. Um, and yeah, I mean, if we can if we could do, you know, a couple European tours, maybe even short tours, that would be a couple weeks at a time. That would be phenomenal. We always, I always, I always had a sense from the very beginning that our style of music, being um, you know rock and roll, but a little bit more blues based, would always go right. really, really well. In the European market broadly. Oh, absolutely. They they've <clears throat> always had a strong following for that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I mean, there have been a lot of bands that, um, I mean, not that they sound like this now, but Kings of Leon was really big in Europe before they were made it big in the states, and then when right. they got big in the states because they kind of changed their sound. Right. It was a, it's a very different sound from when they started out, and so I say thing with Black Keys. I mean, a lot of those real blues-based rock and roll bands just get seem to get a lot bigger reception mm -hmm. over there. That's cool. So where can people find the music that you currently have out now? Well, we've got a website, www.otfrock.com. O-T-F-R-O-C-K.com. Nice. We're definitely on Facebook and Reverb Nation as well. Mm -hmm. um, and all, I, all people have to remember is that O-U-T-T-A, out of the furnace. We haven't found anyone else out there with that name, <laughs> yeah. at least with that spelling. Well, it's, it's so. a unique smelling, yeah. So you can yeah. go on YouTube. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've got yeah. stuff on YouTube. Thankfully, we've got our best videos on YouTube are from <laughs> 757 Bandwagon. Yes. Thanks. Aw, yes. thanks, guys. Yes. Uh, those videos turn out phenomenally well, so we're thankful for that. We were just on the Hampton Road show um, yesterday. Morning. Yeah, what, what, what was it like to be on live TV? TV yeah. stars now, you yeah. know? Yeah. You got your TV fun. star on. It was fun. Honestly, the thing that surprised me the most was how well, like, the acoustics were amazing in the studio. Mm -hmm. And so it was really easy to hear each other and to just play oh, and sing and awesome. play well. And yeah. so, you know, it was, it was I thought yeah. we were pretty comfortable playing. I mean, 
I wish I wish no, I no nervous a jitters. More animated, but you know, let's just it was, uh, you know. I, I was surprised by how nice yeah the big name people were. They were really that's good. cool. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. cool. It was great. Yeah, yeah the, the host, the producer, the director. Yeah, everybody was really all, welcoming. Like, that's yeah. cool. We, we've been fortunate because a lot of what people say have happened to them hasn't happened to us. You know, we've we've been able to not have to deal with any like of the stuff that's come along with like a lot of local things. You know, even playing at the Nova the second time, we got to go backstage. You know, we got backstage yeah, passes yeah, yeah. and everything. Yeah, so it's like it's just been awesome. It's been an awesome ride. That's cool. And and I think it just helped us all personally grow and 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 help us with whatever jump that we've been dealing with. This mm -hmm. music's been kind of been a the spark, the light mm -hmm. in our life to help us move forward, sure. you know? That's awesome. Yeah. So, what kind of advice would you guys have for a local band that's just starting out? Oh, well, let's start with Steve on that one. Uh, you got to be ambitious. Yeah. If, you're not, if you're not ambitious, you're going to get smacked in the face and it's going to be tough. But I would say... I mean, it's almost like a business type of model. Like, you want to know why. You want to know the reason why. Because sometimes it's, it, it may not be as fun as you hoped, and it may be harder than you thought. But always remember why you're doing it and be ambitious. Those are the things, like I said, be creative, be ambitious, and just go for it. Go for what you need to go for. Live that dream. Yeah, I, th I think that's great advice. I mean, Steve, Steve has been the fuel behind this band yeah. from the very beginning. So... Um, and he continues to continues to fuel the fire, which I appreciate. Um, yeah. you know, Andy does too. Of course, yeah. um, but as far as other up and coming bands, I think it's uh, one of the things we've been really impressed with and have been really blessed by is just how just the great community of musicians and local bands around here. Um, oh yeah, the community and, is great. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really good, but it's it's if you if you have some humility inside of the scene mm -hmm. and really try and place yourself like in like some you know just thinking in, in kind of a servant's mindset being like listen if we can just play with you guys you know we'll help you load and help load, whatever like just being around being helpful to other bands looking for shows looking to expose other people you know not this is not thankfully not a very dog eat dog area as far as music is concerned yeah. um, which is which is great it really fosters the scene yeah. you know um, so just look to be, like, look to help other bands as much as you can, as much as you want help yourself. I think that's a, that's a really important and key. And, and just, and just be humble, so. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have some challenging times, no doubt about it. And some shows are going to be better than others. But it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, you just don't, you, you got to, it's more than just the music, really. There's the whole, the whole scene. The atmosphere, yeah. the community. I mean, there. It's truly, you know, it's not about hitting, you know, hitting every note perfectly every show. It's just kind of, you know, it's bringing different dynamics to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's exciting. I mean, it's yeah. And and the other the other thing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah. But the last thing I just remembered is is go all out, like just mm. leave it, like be a hundred percent in what you're doing and what you're Absolutely. playing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's just. Uh, I know when we were first starting out, um, I was so I was so concentrated on getting the music right when I played live, um, and which is good. I mean, you need to you gotta sound good. I mean, that's, right. That's, that's obviously an essential. But I was doing it at the expense of actually performing and actually like trying to do something where people would be engaged, you mm -hmm. know, in the in the audience. And it was really going to the vacation shows. Um, and, and nonviolent crimes as well um, really have a good presence. Um, but I mean, watching John Golden um, sing and play guitar on the vacations, just being like, oh man, it just just observing him like loosened me up internally to be more animated, more expressive. Um, and so, as far as other local bands, you know, you need to you need to be able to have a compelling reason for people to come out. Right. I mean, if you can play good music, obviously that's again that's a baseline. But you want you want to think outside the box and getting crowd participation. You want to really put yourself out there. And you know, honestly, sometimes when you put yourself out there, people don't respond. Yeah. But you got to do it anyway. You got to do it anyway. You need to 
like having every show be an event and being like, oh, that out the furnace show, like that's like, that's a great time, like that's great but, music. But I noticed if you put all of your soul, whether it's in booking, whether it's in playing on stage, whatever it is, if you just put everything you have into everything you do, people will see that and people will feel that. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and you'll get a more of a response. Yeah, yeah that's sure. That's true. So you just got to put everything that's like... Because then it's not you're, not, you're not just going through the motion, right. you know, yeah. you're, you're there and you're exactly. with them and it's an experience. And as Steve said earlier, just to, to reemphasize, persistence is so yeah. key. Steve has just taught me so much even recently about, I mean, he will... He, well, I mean, he hounded Andy. And, his drums were <laughs> yeah. so and look at this. Now Andy, here you are. Jam, and look, <laughs> you know, we've had a band for a year and, yeah. and are, you know, doing stuff. And, and you know, you got to be the, the, the persistent people, the ones who get the shows and the ones who like, get the connections. I mean, you got to be persistent and people got to know you want it. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for sitting down with me. And, uh, yeah, no problem. Thanks, 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 thanks for letting us pick your brain. Yeah, All thanks. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you.